very good morning to one and all of you uh, today i am going to discuss about top 15 internal medicine research articles published in 2020 so these are the practice any articles which have direct uh, impact on your clinical practice care of critically ill patients with uh, covid 19 uh, we have learned that once patients with covid 19 uh, developed ards they look very much like other patients with ards and should be treated with same interventions like other patients with critical illness and ards this include low tidal volume ventilation prone positioning and conservative fluid management with a greater emphasis on protecting healthcare providers this article is published in zama the next article is invasive versus conservative management for stable coronary artery disease for patients with stable coronary artery disease an invasive strategy is unlikely to prevent myocardial infarction or death during several years of follow up in general revascularization in stable cd patients should be reserved for those with unacceptable angina so these research articles are published in new england nagm new england journal of medicine so uh, please remember for any patients with uh, stable cad stable coronary artery disease please go with conservative management rather than invasive management like stenting and so on antibody treatment versus appendectomy for appendicitis so these are very practice changing uh, uh, articles see till now uh, appendectomy is something like a, a treatment of choice for appendicitis patients but uh, right now latest research shows otherwise 70% of patients with append- appendicitis can be treated with antibiotics alone so they do not surgery so literally 70% of patients with appendicitis and they don't need any surgery like appendectomy clinical outcomes and satisfactions are similar in both groups both antibody treatment and appendectomy so these research articles are published in zama and nagm sglt2 inhibitors for patients with heart failure sglt2 inhibitors like dapagliflozin and empagliflozin improved outcomes of patients with heart failure whether or not they had diabetes these articles are published in nagm and lancet drugs for covid-19 despite herculean international efforts in 2020 still we don't have a proper drug for covid-19 instead we have a few modestly effective drugs few possibly effective drugs a few clearly ineffective drugs and a host of drugs awaiting a full evaluation so these articles are published in uh, multiple journals so re- next is rate or rhythm control for atrial fibrillation rhythm control finally seems to have an edge in patients with uh, Uh, recent onset atrial fibrillation so this is research articles are published in anesium next article is evaluation of microscopic hematuria so a new guideline recommends the use of ultrasound rather than ct scan for the evaluation of asymptomatic microscopic hematuria we can avoid radiation and contrast exposure and is less expensive please remember dipstick positivity for blood cells does not constitute microscopic hematuria unless rbcs are visualized under microscopic examination of urine so these articles are published in urology journal so delabeling penicillin allergy as you can see uh, many patients are labeled as allergic to penicillin so this will lead to use of uh, higher antibiotics and uh, most co- costly antibiotics because they are just uh, allergic to penicillin and most of the patients with recorded penicillin allergic are really not allergic to penicillin and taking a simple history Uh, like patients who say that uh, i took augmentin it caused me diarrhea so we know that uh, this is not allergy so just by taking simple history we can remove that penicillin allergy because uh, see causing diarrhea is not allergy penicillin skin testing should be done for those with ig mediated reactions like angioedema anaphylaxis or sudden onset of urticaria especially within the past 5 years in patients with severe cutaneous reactions like uh, sgs dress serum sickness are acute generalized fasciitis then skin testing is not helpful and lifelong evidence of penicillin is warranted so this research article is published in zama so managing persistent sciatica the surgery trial tells us that patients with substantial ongoing pain after four months are likely to benefit from microdiscectomy however we don't know how surgical and non surgical groups fared beyond one year in the physical therapy group the average improvement was statistically significant but clinically marginal patients might derive satisfaction with their involvement in physical therapy but a dramatic effect on pain is unlikely two early physical therapy 
initiated during the first few days of severe sciatica sometimes increases pain and should be avoided. So these articles are published in Anesium and Annals of Internal Medicine. Physical therapy is the first line of treatment for knee osteoarthritis and meniscal tears. Patients with osteoarthritis are, are likely to have better outcomes with physical therapy rather than intraarticular steroid injections. And patients with osteoarthritis and meniscal tears are likely to do well with physical therapy rather than arthroscopic surgery. Clinicians should encourage these patients to complete, to complete an adequate trail of physical therapy when considering other options. These articles are published in Anesium. So we have a new guideline on gout and hyperuricemia. In 2020, American College of Rheumatology has updated the 2012 guideline on management of gout and hyperuricemia on urate lowering therapy. Urate lowering therapy is strongly recommended for patients with greater than two gout flares in a year or TOFI and conditionally recommended for patients with less frequent flares. For patients with first episode with low serum uric acid, urate lowering therapy is not recommended. This research article is published in the Arthritis Journal. Dementia prevention and care, new guidelines. Prevention of risk factors, including excessive alcohol consumption, traumatic brain injury, and air pollution are important. And the 2020 guidelines emphasize lifestyle recommendations in modifying these risk factors. This research article is published in Lancet Journal. Prone positioning can help oxygenation in non-intubated patients with COVID-19. So a number of case series reports uh, reported that prone positioning uh, improves oxygenation in non-intubated patients with COVID-19, but it's unclear whether proning ultimately prevents COVID-19 related deaths. So these articles are published in ZAMA. So no benefit to early dialysis in critically ill patients. This multinational pragmatic trial is largest to examine the timing of dialysis in critically ill patients. Many patients with acute kidney injury will resolve without the help of dialysis. And please don't initiate dialysis unless it is absolutely indicated, like severe hyperkalemia, severe acidosis, or volume overload affecting oxygenation. This article is published in Anesium. Safety of lower oxygenation targets in patients with ARDS. Avoiding an oxygen saturation of 100% still seems prudent, but titrating oxygen down to 90% or lower in patients with ARDS will put them at risk. A target in mid-90s seems to be reasonable in patients who are on mechanical ventilation. So the optimal range to maintain saturation in mechanical ventilated patients is 94 to 98%. So it should not be less than 90 or it should not be 100%. This article is published in Anesium. So these are the, some of the uh, practice changing research articles published in 2020. If I missed out any research article, uh, please mention in the comment section and I'll be making more uh, uh, medical related videos. Uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and also share with your friends. Thank you.